I know who killed Laura Palmer. The Elephant Man. Wait, no. The Elephant Man didn't kill Laura Palmer. I just had this weird backwards talking dream where this creepy bearded guy sent this girl over to whisper in my ear. And then I wake up and there's a copy of The Elephant Man lying on the floor. I mean, I... Never mind. Today we're talking about The Elephant Man. Now I'm going to admit something here. I don't know too much about David Lynch's films, but I know someone who does, and his name is Leon Thomas. He's the host of Renegade Cut, and he's going to talk to you about David Lynch. David Lynch is an American film director and writer. His work is bold and challenging. It's grounded only in the reality that Lynch believes in. His earliest film, Eraserhead, dives into the mind of a man afraid of becoming a father. Mulholland Drive and Lost Highway force us to think about who we really are, as opposed to the idealized version of ourselves. There's a perception of Lynch, or at least of his films, that I don't think is entirely fair or well-reasoned. The perception is that his films are just weird, like they're a bunch of random imagery for the sake of random imagery, but that's never really been the case. His films are surrealist, but at the same time, they have a kind of order to them. Structure. Lynch creates mysteries. He says the more unknowable the mystery, the more beautiful it is. Lynch's mysteries are of the subconscious, of dreams, and he weaves those dreams, sending us clues and patterns, and daring us to make sense of it all. And it does make sense, after a fashion. We just have to be willing to give it proper time and proper thought. While we must keep in mind David Lynch's surreal and dreamlike style when talking about the film, we've also got to remember that the account of the Elephant Man given in the film is really only based on one man's account of Joseph Merrick's life. That man was Frederick Treves, a prominent British surgeon of the Victorian and Edwardian era. In 1884, he encountered Joseph Merrick and brought him to London Hospital, where Merrick would eventually become a permanent resident. In 1923, Treves published The Elephant Man and Other Reminiscences. It is Treves' recollections which form much of the story of The Elephant Man. Before we get bogged down in Treves' recollections of The Elephant Man, Let's talk about the man himself. Let's talk about Joseph Merrick. Joseph Merrick was born in Leicester in 1862 to Joseph and Mary Merrick. He showed no outward signs of deformity until he was five years old. From when on he developed thick lumpy skin, like that of an elephant. The cause of his illness, according to his family, was that his mother, who died when Merrick was ten, had been scared by an elephant while pregnant. Merrick maintained this belief for his entire life. Treves, for whatever reason, always insisted on calling him John Merrick in print, despite the fact that his name was demonstrably not John. When he considered in the film, Treves is John Merrick's best friend in the entire world, the fact that the real guy wasn't bothered to actually print his real name kind of goes against that entire idea. After his mother died, Merrick's father remarried, and Joseph left school to attempt to find work. Firstly, he worked rolling cigars until his condition caused him to lose dexterity in his hands. Later, he worked selling haberdashery door to door, but his difficulty speaking and his facial deformities made it so customers were often horrified by him. His failure to secure employment meant he spent much of his time between 1880 and 1884 in Leicester Union Workhouse. It was in 1884 that Merrick started exhibiting himself as a human curiosity, which, despite what you might think, wasn't necessarily a bad way to make a living for a man of his deformities in Victorian England. A top performer could earn about £20 a week, which is £1,000 in today's money. That's more than some modern YouTubers. Merrick wrote to Sam Torr, a music hall comedian and owner of the Gaiety Palace of Varieties in Leicester. Torr formed a syndicate that took over managing Merrick. As the Elephant Man, he exhibited around the English East Midlands before moving to London for the winter. In London, he encountered the man that Trees vilifies in his book, and that the character of Mr. Bites in the film is based upon. Mr. Bites is this drunken, abusive sideshow performer who has a weird thing for invading Treves' personal space. But he has little in common with the real man, Tom Norman. Norman was a showman who styled himself as the Silver King after the great American showman P.T. Barnum had referred to him as such after attending one of Norman's shows at the Royal Agricultural Hall. Likely due to both Norman's skills as an orator and his habit of wearing a silver necklace, Merrick was not the first or only human curiosity that Norman promoted. In fact, he operated at least 18 penny gaffs around London and had exhibitions all over the UK. From the start of his career in the 1870s, Norman exhibited many types of human curiosity, including an electric lady, a balloon-headed baby, and a family of dwarves that were actually two male dwarves and a borrowed baby. 
which coincidentally was an unsuccessful spin-off in the Three Men and a Baby franchise. According to Treves' account, Norman spoke to Merrick as though he were a dog, and that the shop he was kept in was empty and grey with dust. But Treves had a certain bias against Norman. Under Norman, Merrick was doing rather well for a man of his class. Under Treves, Merrick was a charity case living in a hospital, and all he ever did was build little models. For example, it really wasn't in Norman's best interests to mistreat Merrick. After all, they were in business together. Norman actually attempted to get a special frame constructed to allow Merrick to sleep lying down and not break his neck due to the weight of his own head. Despite what Treves said, Norman actually kept the shop particularly clean, insisting it was swept every morning. Merrick made most of the money as Norman had to pay for food, rent and lodgings. It is known that Merrick at one point had savings of up to £50, which was pretty good going for a working class man in the 1880s. So at least under Tom Norman, Merrick had a job. Merrick was making money. Merrick was travelling. In the film, Treves has to walk down some London back street to find Merrick for their first meeting. The actual Penny Gap in Whitechapel where Treves first encountered Merrick was across the road from London Hospital where Treves worked. In order for Treves to meet Merrick, Norman agreed to put on a show early for Treves. So what Treves recalls was actually Norman putting on a show, not the real relationship between the two men. But what was life like under Treves? Merrick visited London Hospital two or three times in 1884. Treves examined him, photographed him, and on the 2nd of December 1884, presented him to the Pathological Society of London. Some of the photographs were given to Merrick and used in his pamphlets to advertise his exhibit. Feeling as though the hospital treated him like an animal in a cattle mart, Merrick didn't return there for another two years. Instead, with popular opinion turning and the police being more active in shutting down exhibits like Merrick's, he went on tour in Europe. During this period, he was no longer associated with Tom Norman. In 1885, he moved on to Sam Roper's travelling fair, which included a team of helpful dwarves that looked after Merrick, much like Kenny Baker does in the film. And then he transferred to a European manager. Unfortunately, like in Britain, police kept shutting down the exhibit and forcing Merrick to move on. Unlike in the film where Drunken Bites beats Merrick and locks him in a monkey cage where he's then freed by a bunch of circus performers, what actually happened was Merrick's unknown European promoter stole all of Merrick's money, the aforementioned £50, which is about £4,000 in today's money, and abandoned him. Merrick made his way back to England and at Liverpool Street Station was so desperate for help he began to appeal to onlookers and as a result he gathered a crowd which brought the attention of the police. Which in the film is the I am not an animal scene where Merrick is hounded by gawkers before the police rescue him and take him to Treves. Which is exactly what they did in real life as Merrick still had Treves' calling card from years before. He was taken into London Hospital and Francis Carr Gom, the chairman of the hospital committee, appealed to the Times to find him a place to stay. As no place was found, a charitable fund was established to keep Merrick and he remained in the hospital's care. For better or worse, he remained in exhibit when he was in the hospital, whether it be the well-to-do or porters like Jim in the film bringing their friends to gawp at him. Other such visitors included Princess Alexandra, the Princess of Wales, while Marge Kendall, the actress, probably never met him face to face, or recited Romeo and Juliet with him. She did raise money for him, she did send him pictures and letters, and she was involved in helping him get a visit to the theatre. In the film, the visit to the theatre is one of the last things that John Merrick ever does. The real Joseph Merrick did visit a pantomime and by all accounts raved about it for months afterwards. Like he really loved it and probably didn't quite get the fact that it wasn't real. The Elephant Man is about many things. It's about how John Merrick had an immense inner beauty. But because of his deformities, he could only ever play at being like the rest of society. In the film, Merrick feels most normal and most human after his trip to the theatre. And in the film, perhaps thinking that this is the closest he'll ever get to being a normal person, he tries to sleep like a normal person and dies. That was pretty much Frederick Treves' opinion on Joseph Merrick. He thought that Merrick had tried to sleep like a normal human being and ended up asphyxiating himself. Another theory is that Merrick was so depressed from being stuck in the hospital that he actually killed himself. In the film, I kind of feel like the character of John Merrick decides, well, this is as good as it's gonna get. I might as well try sleeping lying down 
and if I die, I die happy. The Elephant Man is also about how Victorian society was industrial, scientific and forward thinking, but medical science had not yet fully caught up. Trees can do nothing for Merrick besides give him a place to live. And in the end, Treves is just as guilty of making Merrick a curiosity as Bites is. If David Lynch presents us with mysteries, then is the mystery of the Elephant Man where John Merrick belongs? Was there anywhere someone like him could peacefully live in Victorian society? Although Treves' account is biased and inaccurate, it does lend itself better to a filmic portrayal, and the film is full of fantastic performances, particularly John Hurt, because you would not know under all that makeup, that that is John Hurt. It doesn't even sound like him for 90% of the film. So if you're like me and you haven't really watched much David Lynch beyond Twin Peaks, I would definitely say watch The Elephant Man. Just remember that the tale of The Elephant Man as told here is a little bit skewed.